Hi everyone, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Today you're joined once again, of course, by my Golf R. But not just one Golf R, I've also got the Mark 7, the pre-facelifted one. Obviously mine is the 7.5, the facelifted one. Um, and Leon, a friend of mine and subscriber of mine, um, is also here off camera. Um, and he's kindly brought his along so I can compare it to mine. Because ever since I've bought the Golf R, so a couple of months now, I've received so many questions uh, regarding what is the difference between the Mark 7 and the Mark 7.5. So this video is dedicated especially to you guys who are wondering that. Um, and there's actually a few more differences than I first expected. Okay, everybody, meet Leon, who's the owner of this lovely Mark 7 Golf R. It's actually really interesting to have both cars together. But, obviously, uh, finishing lap is blue, but what other bits and bobs have you got on it? Yeah, hi guys, so um, it's a yeah, 2014 uh, stock Golf R Mark 7, uh, finishing lap is blue, uh, standard 18 inch wheels, um, three door. That's interesting, the um, fact that it's three door. Yeah, so just chose that, purely not really out of choice, it was just sort of one that I, I managed to come across. Three door doesn't really impact me that much. Mm. At the moment, it kind of looks a bit more sporty, actually. It, yeah, so obviously so mine's the five it's door. Quite nice. Um, so yeah, so inside um, we've got the sort of grey uh, Alcantara seats. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a uh, manual. Yes. Rather than a DSG. And actually, I didn't realise you didn't tell me that it was a manual, which so, is really interesting because I've never seen yep. a manual Golf R. I think they're quite rare because most of them are DSG like mine. Yeah, exactly, and on a, and if you go to buy one brand new now, uh, DSG is, is the only option, mm. and then I'm gonna make it manual. Is it, really? It is, yeah, DSG is no the, the only option now. Um, the, yeah, so, I mean, manual for myself, I, I wanted to be sort of a bit more engaged mm. um, on the road. Definitely. Um, it is fun if you're sort of coming out of straight, you can sort of throw into as, as many gears as you can, as yeah. fast as you can. The heel and toe, um, bits and bobs. <laughs> exactly. I mean, there are there are times when I do wish I had the SG, go around sort of a windy road, mm. try and get into corners as quick as you can and so on. Um, and also the, the DSG farts. Yes, of course. That with this car as well. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think for myself, it's just a bit more engaged to have a manual um, and just it feels a bit more sort of Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, there's there's not much more inside. Um, like you said, it's it's completely stock, isn't it? It's, so yeah, completely um, stock. Nothing else has been done to the car since I purchased it eight months ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been driving the car for sort of a little while now. Sort of yeah, I've got to feel with that, and it is it is a, it's a really good car. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've only had mine for probably two months, but they're they're wicked cars. They wicked, are. Wicked they cars. are extremely fun to drive. <laughs> So rather interestingly, there is quite a lot of differences between the Mark 7 and the Mark 7.5, but only a couple of them are actually performance related. So the Mark 7, the pre-facelifted car, is running 296 horsepower stock, whereas the 7.5 is running 306. So it's a power hike of about 10 horsepower, which realistically isn't that much. So I presume that it's just various engine tweaks and just kind of rough upgrades really, because they both have the same two litre turbo engine. Um, however, obviously you guys all know that I've had a resonator delete done to mine, so it's not completely performance related stock. And I actually ran it on Regal's dyno a couple of weeks ago and ran 322 brake. Um, so that's really rather interesting. Um, but the other kind of performance related um, difference between the 7 and the 7.5 is actually down to the gearbox. Um, now, as Leon explained, his is actually um, spec'd with a manual, which I find really, really cool. Um, but if this was a DSG, you could only have the option of a six speed, whereas my car is obviously a seven speed. So there's been some slight tweaks in that. Um, but as performance kind of changes go, that is about it. The rest are cosmetic. Okay, so starting with the cosmetic changes. Now, pretty much the whole front end um, of the 7.5 is different compared to the 7. Uh, now, if I come actually a little bit closer, we can see that there's completely different uh, aero, more aggressive on the R, um, completely finished in gloss black, whereas there's actually multiple chrome um, accents as standard. Obviously, with my car, I've only made one modification to the front, and that is wrapping this chrome piece here. Now, this is the only chrome bit uh, on the front of the 7.5 because it goes into the chrome on the headlights and I thought that it, it didn't really notice too much uh, and the grill did 
Um, so yeah, you can probably see a completely redesigned front end. Now, the lights are also different front and back. So on mine, you can see uh, it's more aggressive. And then on the seven, if I come actually quite close, you can see it's just one little bar. And if I come to the back, on the seven, we've just got one uh, kind of, I don't know, blade uh, of indicator there. And then on mine, we've got the smart indicator. So they do a little swoop and that is quite cool as well. The whole uh, rear light units are actually uh, pretty different as well, some upgraded LEDs and whatnot. Now actually whilst we're at the back of the car, um, the rears are actually quite similar. They share the same exhaust tips, uh, but there's only one uh, real difference which I've noticed, and that is the gloss black kind of accent slash body kit that you get on the face of your car. Slightly more aggressive rear diffuser. Uh, we can see here it's shown in gloss black. We come over to the seven because it doesn't have that, but it still does have a little diffuser. As for the side skirts, that's the same story. We've got a slightly more aggressive side skirt on the 7.5, whereas uh, the 7 has a colour matched. Uh, it still is a side skirt, but it's not as aggressive. And I think that's one of the main design cues with the facelift. They've made it a lot more aggressive. If we actually come back to the front, we can see we've got, I wouldn't call them canards, but slightly uh, lower splitter sections and these grill pieces also in gloss black. We still get those on the 7, um, but just not as aggressive and pronounced. Now I'm actually just quickly going to touch on the wheels. Now um, the 19 inch Pretorias that are fitted on my car were not new to uh, the 7.5. And these actually are the 18 inches uh, on Leon's car, um, which again are available on the 7.5, um, but that's actually just a different spec. But no, the Pretorias do not come with the facelift. You can order them uh, or actually buy one secondhand with the Pretorias on. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the uh, exterior differences between the 7.5 and the 7. So what I'm gonna do now, I've got Leon's key in my hand, is actually hop in, start it up, and show you the differences between uh, the interiors, because actually, I think that is kind of the main difference. And actually, this is the first time I've sat in a manual Golf R. I'm gonna start it up quickly. This is strange, being in a manual say this uh, the manual gearbox actually feels really rather good okay so inside the car now uh, you've probably already noticed the two main differences and they are the analog kind of more standard dashboard and also the infotainment system now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the interior of this then whiz over to mine and show you uh, kind of what the differences are basically so Obviously, the dashboard, you have a, a, a an analogue, uh, more traditional uh, dashboard with the gauges, but then you do have a little screen in the middle for your various driving uh, information and bits and bobs like that. And actually, I am kind of learning as I go here because this is the first time I've been in a Mark 7. Um, now, even though the majority of the gauges, the dials, uh, actually the steering wheel um, and this central section with the aircon and everything is all the same, um, but the bits I'm going to talk about uh, are obviously different. So, infotainment system. Um, what I'm getting first off the bat is it's not quite as HD as the 7.5. These buttons along the side, on either side, um, are not... I don't know how to explain it. They're not a screen, whereas on the 7.5, I'll show you in a minute, they are built into uh, the screen interface. As for the various controls uh, and kind of aspects of the uh, infotainment system are the same, but it's just been revamped. It's just been facelifted, uh, I suppose you could say. Obviously all the driving modes, bits and bobs, traction control, they are all the same. Um, so yeah, that is the interior, but I will say it does make a massive difference. As you'll see when I hop into my car in a second, um, the virtual cockpit on mine and also the upgraded touchscreen uh, infotainment system is, it makes a massive difference. But actually, before we do that, I'm just going to spin around quickly and show you these seats. Now these are, uh, again, the cloth standard seats that you get on the Golf R, the same as mine. However, the difference between the 7 and the 7.5 is the Alcantara uh, is grey instead of black. Now I actually don't mind it as much. I think I still do prefer mine because obviously it's black, it's more stealthy, uh, it kind of fits the interior a bit better with all the gloss black uh, accents here and there. But, but it's actually quite interesting how they've changed that. And I think for kind of maybe a lighter colour car, like uh, maybe a white or actually even a black car, this actually might look quite good. But I'm not sure what it's like um, on the lapis blue. Now this is uh, an option which you can't change. You can't get black 
Alcantara from the factory when you um, when you spec the cloth seats. Uh, the leather seats are obviously a different question. You, they can be full uh, black leather. But there we go. That is the interior of the Mark 7. Um, still a very nice place to be. Um, but let's put it over to my car and show you basically the differences. Okay then, back into mine. Now, I have done one little modification to the interior of my car and you guys which are already familiar to the channel will obviously know that already and that is the T-Carbon carbon extension paddles. Yes, I know I need to refuel. Um, <laughs> anyway, so the first thing you'll know is, well hopefully you'll think, wow. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's a massive difference coming from the 7 to the 7.5. You have this lovely virtual cockpit which you can switch between the different modes. You can see we've averaged 26.3 mpg and that is of course being in race mode uh, which isn't too bad. I've had it up to about 30 when you're in normal mode on the motorway uh, but that's a different video if you guys want me to do um, a running costs or average consumption blah 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 on the Golf R then do let me know in the comments but it's a very easy um, nice kind of system to use really it is quite similar to um, the 7 in the aspect that you have these controls on the steering wheel um, to kind of operate the central part of the screen um, but it's all been revamped it's very high quality it's very sharp actually um, very very nice place to be you know obviously if I were to go into the navigation you get that on the screen as well um, and you can also change uh, the different um, kind of units that you have on here so here I'm at the park and also if I go to drive you'll see that there and then we have the speed there as well you can change those units uh, as you wish but that's how I've got it there moving over to the infotainment system just put that plug back in there you can see that it's been massively um, improved revamped it's actually a bigger system I think it's an eight inch screen here and also these buttons along either side like I was mentioning in the seven uh, are actually built into the screen they're touchscreen as well they're not actual buttons like what you have down here now what I'm actually quite surprised about with uh, the 7.5 is why we haven't had an upgraded um, climate control unit um, I know it does work it's perfectly simple it's very easy to use and I want my heater seat on because it's freezing today it's four degrees was about two when we started filming um, but I'm surprised that these aren't kind of touchscreen buttons like what you have um, on the screen up here but we have an awesome G meter and various other eco modes and everything but actually if you guys watch my five things I hate about my Golf R then you'll know that one of them was actually the standard Golf um, let me try and get it there we go standard Golf um, kind of displays which is annoying it's a small thing um, but anyway back to the G meter because we like a bit of that obviously mine is spec'd with the seven speed DSG and like I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier on in the video um, if you to spec DSG on the 7 you would only get a 6 speed. Now if I were to just hop out really quickly to show you the difference in seats. Now here we go, we've got the black Alcantara. Now like I mentioned these are the standard seats. You can get leather like what you can spec uh, in the 7 but instead of having grey Alcantara you have black and I think for this car, for this spec, it definitely does suit it along with the white stitching and the white logos. Uh, but it's interesting how they've, um, how they've changed that from the 7 being uh, grey Alcantara to black Alcantara and actually I love these seats they're so cool and they're actually really quite supportive um, but anyway yes that is the interior and that is actually pretty much going to round up this video okay so there we go that is going to round up today's video dude thank you so much right, for coming along and bringing your car it's actually been really interesting for me to kind of experience uh, and sit inside and actually look at the pre-facelifted car, the Mark 7 up close, and especially a manual. I've never yeah. even seen a manual, and what we were kind of saying off camera is they're actually quite rare, um, and they're stopping making um, what manuals in 7.5 form now or something, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly, you can only so, buy, uh, yeah, DSG. Which is actually quite interesting, I didn't know that. Um, but anyway, yes, there we go. Those are the differences between the Mark 7 and the Mark 7.5, the main ones anyway. I'm sure there's different uh, little tweaks that they've done uh, but for those of you who wanted to know and that have asked the question, that is, there is your answer, basically. Now, I'll leave Leon's Instagram link down in the description if you want to learn more about his Mark 7. I've pretty much convinced you to get a Res Delete now. <laughs> 100%, it's going to happen. Yeah, but anyway, that is it for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.